Australia has the highest incidence of skin cancer in the world. Elementary school students wear hats and sunglasses to protect themselves from ultraviolet rays. The ozone layer depletion caused by fluorocarbons is a major global environmental problem. In 1987, the international community adopted the Montreal Protocol to reduce fluorocarbons. The parties agreed that by 1996, industrial countries would completely phase out CFCs, the most potent ozone-depleting fluorocarbon. These are the projected levels of chlorine contained in fluorocarbons in the atmosphere. Without the protocol, chlorine levels would be expected to rise indefinitely. However, with full compliance, chlorine levels are projected to return to 1980 levels by around 2050. The Montreal Protocol has proven to be very effective in helping the ozone layer recover. The issue remaining was how to prevent the venting of used fluorocarbons. Western nations passed laws requiring fluorocarbon recovery. This helped stop the venting. But Japan passed no such laws, and fluorocarbon venting continued as before. Citizens groups across Japan rose up against this threatening situation. A group in Gumma Prefecture led the campaign. The group was the Stop Fluorocarbons Network, formed in 1993. They started the campaign to recover fluorocarbons and stop the venting from used refrigerators and car air conditioners. The group formed a national organization named Japan's Save the Ozone Network and gathered 150,000 signatures for a law to require fluorocarbon recovery. They submitted the petition in 1995. However, the petition was dismissed. One element blocking a law was the response of MITI, the Ministry of International Trade and Industry. <laughs> A MITI advisory council submitted a report that said requiring fluorocarbon recovery is inappropriate. The biggest issue was the huge cost, estimated at 60 billion yen annually. あの、社会的なシステムとしてそれを作らなければなりませんから、つまりあの、例えば回収した a tireless citizens' campaign turned this adverse situation around. The group held many meetings, inviting people from automakers and electronics manufacturers. It aimed at raising awareness of why the law was needed. The group also began research meetings with lawmakers. At first, automakers and MITI promised that industry would voluntarily recover fluorocarbons instead of establishing a law. But the actual recovery rate remained at 12%. 
This fact led some lawmakers to act. その業界がとりあえず自主的に不論の回収はやってますよっていうのがまあ業界も通産省も言い分だったんですけども数字を詳しく見ると全然回収率が低いんですねとその回収してますとこれじゃ言えないんじゃないかともとにかくこれは時間